Are you thinking about getting a puppy? Maybe a couple of puppies from the same litter? You might think you're doubling the fun, but you're really doubling the challenges. It turns out there's a scientific term to describe behavior issues that can happen in litter mates adopted together. It is called litter mate syndrome. And here, to save your sanity <laughs> during puppy raising days, is one of the country's leading experts on puppies and dogs. Please welcome back to our show, the founder and head trainer of What a Great Dog, Maureen Patton. Welcome back, Maureen. Thank you, Arden. Happy to be here. <laughs> you know, I've learned a lot about behavior, but you threw me for a curve. I have not heard the term littermate syndrome. Is it new? Is it just starting to get out there to people? Tell us, tell us the backstory. Yes. Yeah, so it's an interesting thing. It's a term that hasn't been around for very long, I don't believe. So I think it's something that's gaining interest, knowledge is spreading about it. But unlike so many topics in canine behavior, there's not a lot of scientific research behind this. On so many issues, we can find excellent university-led studies that really help kind of lead the way. But there hasn't been done one done on this one yet. There needs to be. So all we have really is anecdotal evidence, but the anecdotal evidence is very compelling. So let's talk about it. it, it litter mate syndrome. What does it mean? So What's the uh, umbrella term, if you would, the description. Yeah. So the description is that trainers and others, veterinarians and others that are around a lot of dogs and a <laughs> yeah, lot of puppies. That would be, we've noticed that when two puppies are adopted from a litter, and are raised together that almost always significant issues develop. And it's a really interesting thing. And trainers all over the country talk about it. It's widely known. More and more breeders are learning about it. And that's really the key because so yes. many breeders are encouraging those families, take two, they'll be best friends. They'll entertain each other is the thing that we always hear talked about when in fact, it's really sometimes a recipe for disaster. And let's talk about that because, yes, I have always felt, well, maybe I should get two from the shelter because then they'll be buddies for life. Right. And, and even shelters and breeders, shelters will say, hey, this is a bonded pair. That's Did true. They need yes. to go together. Yes. So you're flipping this. So I am. Yes. So talk about what are some of the things that people may not realize could result if you brought home two puppies. Yes, absolutely. Let me mention one thing though. The shelters will talk about bonded pairs that need to be adopted together. And that is true that they do. And that's when we've gotten past the puppy stage and these okay, are okay. that were raised together. They are now so deeply bonded that they would be emotionally crippled, separated. This is one of the key issues that happens when litter mates are adopted. So, so let's yeah. talk, wait a minute. Let's, that's a really yes. good distinction because Kona and Emma are bonded. They've yes. been together three, four years. They're adult dogs. Yes. If some happen, please don't want it. Oh, right. They would need to be adopted to get. We have provisions, you know. Yes. If something happens, but the point is that's a good point because they're adults. They have formed friendships and they yes. have formed connections with people. But that's right. a different story with these fresh out of the litter puppies, right? Yes, and so the when when littermate puppies especially, although we will also see this with same age puppies that are adopted together. So maybe okay. they came from different wow. litters, but one's six weeks and one's eight weeks and they were adopted together. We'll see the same phenomena with that setting. So when two puppies are, are really taken away from their litter together and raised together, that's where we find uh, littermate syndrome. Adult dogs will often bond in a family and sometimes very deeply, the way you're talking about your two dogs. But what we see is if those two dogs did have to be separated, one of them passed away, something happened. Right. The other dog will eventually recover and be okay. Okay. With these litter mate puppies that are raised together, that's not the case. They are really permanently emotionally crippled from the experience. So give some specifics. What's at play? It's a it's kind of a crazy thing, but we see very significant behavior issues. So one of the main ones that we see is a lack of confidence, usually in both puppies, but wow. almost always in at least one of them. They've become too reliant on each other, we think. And so when those two puppies, so at our training facility, we do primarily group classes. As you know, we do about 200 group classes every week. So we see lots and lots of dogs. We actually see about 3000 new dogs every year, many, wow. many of those puppies. So we get, we get to collect a lot of data. Again, there's not a study on this, but our 
anecdotal experience is pretty hefty. So we see these litter mate puppies come in and often they're at the teenage stage by the time they show up with us. And, so- and for folks, what's basically teenage in dog and puppy? Gotcha. Here? So that adolescent period is going to typically be something like six months to nine to 12 months, somewhere okay. in there. So they're out of the little puppy stage, but they're not a fully developed dog yet. So that adolescent stage that can be a challenging stage anyway. But that's often when we're going to see dogs in general. People will have adopted puppies and maybe didn't go to puppy class and kind of wait until adolescence hits and maybe some problems <laughs> hit. But they're like, okay, we better we better go to yeah. training class. Yeah. And when those families show up with litter mate puppies, what we find is that those puppies are far less confident. We often see lots of fear issues. Number one would be fear reactivity. So that's the version of leash reactivity where a dog is reacting, overreacting to strange dogs and or strange people with barking, growling, lunging out of fear. And so we'll see that in our litter mate puppies almost always. The other thing we see is what I would call poor training outcomes. So the family's working hard with these litter mate puppies. They're doing the homework, but they just don't get the results that the other families do. And I've got some conjecture and we'll get into that on on mate perhaps on why, why I think that's the case. But we see it over and over again that those puppies just don't train up as well. Uh, the do, pup- do the people mm-hmm. try to bring in both puppies for one handler at a time? That sounds like a disaster too. Yeah, so we don't allow that. That, w- that You're right. That would be a complete recipe for disaster. <laughs> so we have to have one handler per dog. And then we go a step further. We won't allow litter mate puppies to be in the same class. Yes, so yes. And that's, to that's the benefit them to set them up for success, right? Absolutely right. And so occasionally those pups often actually, aren't able to go right into group class. They need some help with private lessons. And so often on that first private lesson, we'll let the two puppies be together and then we'll work it where they come in at separate times because that is one of the keys to avoiding or lessening litter litter mate syndrome. Those pups get one-on-one time with their people out away from home. So yeah. Now, people need to know your background. I mean, folks, this lady has been dedicated to bringing out the best in all canines for many years. What a great dog. I personally have experienced it with my two dogs, Kona and Emma, and taken levels of classes, Canine Good Citizen. You have a good team there. You Tell us where you're located and how long you've been doing this. Oh, thank you. So yes, we're in the Dallas area. We have two locations, one in Briscoe and one in Richardson, again, in the Dallas area. And so I've been training for a very long time, over <laughs> 30 years, but as a full-time professional for about 16 years now. We started What a Great Dog about 16 years ago. And wow. we now have over 20, we have about 20 trainers, full-time, full-time trainers on our staff. And we run two big training centers. One's 16,000 square foot, the other's 24,000 square foot. And we run lots of classes, puppy and classes. you were so owners. smart to buy these properties before. <laughs> before things got crazy. Hey, yes. if you need real estate advice, talk to Maureen. This lady is clairvoyant. <laughs> yeah. No, that was smart. <laughs> so we've got about a minute left before the, the break. So Right away, I'm getting takeaways. Separate them, set them up for individual success. And it sounds like you're kind of doing that to also diminish their interdependence on each other. Yes. And I and before I even would get into much of a conversation about how to lessen it, I would really implore families to not take two puppies. And I love having multiple dogs, as I know you do too, Arden. But having that those adoptions separated by at least six months solves to this issue completely. Okay, so you get a puppy and you go into training and all that, and then six to months or later, yes. then it would be more applicable for everyone's sanity and everyone's yes. success to then add the second one. Absolutely. For the sake of the puppies, that is absolutely the best way to do it. And they'll become great friends and they'll entertain each other, but you won't have this litter mate syndrome issue. All right. Wow. I'm getting bow wowed by Maureen uh, Patton. She is the head trainer and founder of What a Great Dog. It's in the Dallas area, folks. Go to whatagreatdog.com. Very easy. 